All right, taking a break from the International for a minute. This is a project I picked up today. It was founded on Marketplace. It is a 49cc pocket bike made in China. My favorite thing about these little bikes is everything you can get on Amazon and they're so cheap. So we're gonna fix it up and sell it for some profit. So first thing when I went to pick it up was make sure everything's there. You wanna check that the engine is there, that it's attached. Also pull the cord, make sure it has good compression. Then in here, this is gonna be your carburetor setup and then you've also got an air filter. It is covered in a lot of dust, but the guy said it was just in his garage for 15 years. Second thing, you want to also check in the fuel tank. Is there fuel in there or has it been cleaned out? That'll depend on if you need to do a carb clean or something like that. On top of that, you also want to check out the handlebars. This is your grip and you've got a kill switch here. Check that your brakes work. Then on the right hand side, you've actually got your twist throttle. Make sure that it's not seized or anything. And then here's your other brakes. One thing with these mini bikes that's pretty common is these handlebars will actually be loose. You basically, you end up moving the handlebar and that can be dangerous while riding so that'll need to be tightened up. While you're checking the brakes, make sure to go down there, check that it actually pulls and engages properly. Same thing with the rear, seems to be good enough. Final thing, check the plastics. You can find them pretty cheap but also it helps if the plastics are in good condition. This one you can see there's some green paint underneath so it's being repainted at one point but it actually looks pretty decent. Another thing with these mini bikes is the exhaust pipes. They can be pretty loud and give off some fumes, so it's nice when the thing is complete and you don't have to buy a new part. I bought this bike not running and I, all I checked was that it had good compression, so things you need, you need spark, air, and fuel. So the fuel is gonna come from the fuel tank and then there's the shutoff valve right there. You also need to probably clean the carburetor, make sure that it's set properly. Next thing, you're gonna wanna check the spark and then also make sure your air filter is not plugged or anything. And before I get working on it, I'm gonna probably wipe off all this Gunk, don't want to get any of the gunk inside the engine while the carb's off. It'll also look better for pictures if it's clean. Got the bike on the workbench right now, so first thing to tackle is actually going to be these loose handlebars, because when I pick it up and down, that's not good. So all you need is an Allen key. Sometimes you need to put a wrench on that side. You just tighten it up. Make sure to put it in a, an okay spot, so I like it with a little bit of an angle, not completely straight. It's all just rider preference. And one other thing to look at when you're buying a bike is actually to see if the tires hold air. I've had them before where you have to just put some slime in them, but make sure they're in decent condition. I've got the handlebars in a position I like now, so all I gotta do is take the T-handle, tighten up the bolt, and then it'll keep them in place. The best way to gain access into the carburetor and all those nuts and bolts is actually to take off this main plastic seat. So for this one, there's two screws there sometimes there's four screws and then there's one at the front and then this whole thing actually just lifts right up make sure to take off the gas cap so that the fuel tank can stay there i'm going to leave the fuel tank there for now because it is actually zip tied on there but alternatively you can pull that off once you get working on these it, it can be pretty addicting so tonight all i thought i was going to get done was just take a look and clean up the bike but now i've taken off the seat, then all this exhaust pipe, gonna just take off the two Allen bolts there, and then I'll be able to gain better access to the carburetor and start cleaning that. Just one on either side of this exhaust flange. It's pretty straightforward. With both those bolts out, it just separates from the engine, and then you just gotta find the best way to pull it out of the frame. Don't forget to loosen other bolts. All right, we got some very old gas inside here, and there's probably some bugs in there, so, now that I've taken off the gas tank, we'll see what can empty. That is gross. We've got the tank emptied, we'll let it dry overnight and then we can put some fresh fuel in it when we go to start the mini bike tomorrow. To remove the carburetor, you just loosen these two Allens. They go straight into the mount. And then you also have to loosen the barrel that's connected to the throttle. So now with the carburetor out, we'll be able to take this into the parts cleaner and clean it up, make sure the jets are clear and make sure that everything is working. Then we'll be able to reinstall it on the bike and hopefully start it up. For these smaller jobs, my favorite thing to do is get an old baking pan, little brush here, and then pour some gasoline in the tray. You can wipe off all the gunk. Works pretty well. As you can see, I've got the carburetor reinstalled on there. Pretty straightforward. I didn't show much of the 
process of me cleaning it. You can find a bunch of videos online. This is just to show you kind of the steps that I'm taking to fix up this bike. So second step now, we've got the spark plug here and when I was pulling it and spinning this, no spark was uh, coming through the spark plug. So I'm guessing it's a bad coil. I'm gonna do some tests on it and I think I've got a spare so I'll probably throw that on and see if we can get some spark to get this engine running. So here's the old coil. It was actually bad so I went to our other mini bike, just took this one off and it seems to work fine. So I've got spark now and we'll just have to hook up the fuel system. This is where the pull cord and the cover all mounts right on here. One thing, this is gonna be connected to your kill switch but sometimes if your kill switch goes bad, you can follow this wire up and actually disconnect it right here. So the way this kill switch works is all it does is ground the engine to the frame kills the spark so you can always just disconnect this if you think the kill switch is going to be bad or causing electrical problems with the engine one thing i found out last night is that this old black uh, fuel line is actually super hard not very flexible so what i'm going to do i got a bunch of fuel line here so i'm just going to replace it all hopefully it will prevent any leaking and i won't need to put zip ties on it and then that'll make sure that there's no leaks and no fires will happen so i didn't actually have fuel line that was the right diameter to fit on there and then same thing with just onto the fuel shutoff and the other side of the filter. So all I do, get a torch and then you just kind of wave it in front of there for the, uh, the blue pipe and then you just kind of use it once it's heated up, it's more pliable and it'll stick on, works quite well. Now all I have to do, heat up the last end and then put it onto the gas tank. So put the bike all back together, got the gas can sitting up there, made sure that the lines are strapped to the frame, also reinstalled the exhaust, don't want any gas touching the exhaust. But everything's ready to go. I'm gonna start her up. All right, you can see there, what actually happened is we started the engine and the clutch is engaged. So we're probably gonna rip that off now, see if we can do something to clean it up so at idle, the rear wheel is not spinning. Back on the workbench, just undo the screws. That's uh, gonna reveal the clutch there, take off the chain. And we're just gonna do some inspection. So you can see here, we're missing a spring, so we're actually gonna take this clutch apart. We've got some spare parts and then we'll fix it up. You can see here, those are the remaining parts of the spring, so it must have exploded at some point, but uh, we'll be able to fix it. What we've done here, we undid these screws, they're 14 millimeter, and then what we did, took out the bolts, cleaned them off with some sandpaper, and then you also wanna clean the inside there. We're gonna use some uh, brake slide uh, lubricant and just put it on there and on there and then we'll just bolt it back in and then the clutch should be good to go so we got everything put back together make sure to take pictures for the springs and their direction now we'll just mount this outer covering with the chain and see if it's any better so we got the bike on a stand again and I actually completely replaced the carburetor we're having problems with it it was leaking and I didn't really want to mess with that so just replace the carburetor with a spare one I had laying around so we're gonna run it now Runs quite well. So now that I got the carburetor all sorted out, final steps here, I actually uh, put some oil on the chain right here. I've got a bottle and just an old toothbrush. Just run it through the chain, spin the tire, and you'll lubricate it. And as you can see, there's actually some snow on it. So once I piece it all back together, took it for a rip, we'll insert some clips here, and it's a blast. Just doing some fine tuning today. What we figured out, the idle was actually too high. So the screw right in there, you just take a flathead. We turned it out and then that made the idle way better. Another thing we did, 
loosen this bolt here and we're able to spin the 10 millimeter nut and that adjusts the axle because the chain was actually too loose so you want it to be have a little bit of slack but it was way looser than that and that was causing problems the chain actually popped off while i was riding so now based on those adjustments when we start the engine the rear tire does not move anymore so i'm quite pleased with that very nice very nice All right, that was a blast. Love riding it in the snow, even with these uh, bald tires. Still did great. Imagine what it would do if it actually had some grip. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Also leave a comment if you like this sort of content and what you'd want to see in the future. We do have another mini bike here, so we'll probably be working on that soon.